up here will talk about the Matilda Mutant Visor Ring Show. Pat. Well, I wanted to thank everyone for coming out tonight. Luckily, the rain has stopped, at least it did for a while, so that made it much nicer. And um, so I think everyone's had a chance to walk through the various rooms and see kind of the um, arc of the exhibition, which kind of follows the arc of Matilda Newton Lessonling's life. And she was born at the little bit before the turn of the century in 1870, and she died in 1949. And during her life, she was a very prolific artist, as you can see this cross representation of her work. And she used all mediums, pencil, charcoal, oil, um, canvas, board, paper, you name it, she was doing it. And um, the real impetus for this exhibition was in 2005, her nephew, who's 94 years old and lives in New York, donated to the Arts Club his collection of over 100 of her drawings and sketches and watercolors, uh, some papers, and um, a number of slides of her other work. And the Arts Club already had in its collection about five of Mathilde's paintings, primarily the portraits of her husband and of herself, which is over the fireplace, and a few others. And that began kind of the idea of really going back and seeing what we might be able to rediscover by rediscovering the art of one of the founding members of the Arts Club. And um, in doing so, it became quite obvious that at the turn of the um, beginning of the 20th century in Washington, women were very much a integral part of the arts community and were given um, basically almost equal footing with men, which is quite different than what was maybe going on in some of the other cities, Philadelphia or New York, where in many cases the women artists felt a little bit more marginalized. And for example, the Arts Club allowed women, was in essence formed by women and allowed women as charter members and founding members of the club, as well as the Washington Watercolor Club and the Society of Washington Artists. So um, Matilda was in the middle of all of these, and it was just really fascinating to discover how um, involved she was with the arts community in Washington and how vibrant the community was. So um, when they would have their openings at the, Cor at the Corcoran Museum in the early 1900s, uh, the newspaper articles would report it as though it was a grand event, and it would have uh, headlines, 1,500 people thronged opening night of the Society of Washington Artists annual show. This is 1,500 people in 1910. So, I mean, we, you know, to get that kind of support for art at that time is quite exciting. So, is that kind of the context of looking at her life? What it's, you go through the rooms, you'll see it's kind of divided into five sections, and you can kind of follow it with the text boards and the, with her training in Paris, then going through her development of her genres, whether it was still life, landscape, or obviously portraits, which she was primarily known as a portrait painter. And we've also prepared a catalog which goes into a lot of detail about her life and as many images in it, and that is available um, on your way out for purchase. So um, I will be around if anybody has questions afterwards, but I definitely want to make sure that the Hanoi 1000 curator, Raquel, can have a chance to talk with you all about her exciting exhibition. Thank you.